When a serial killer is locked up anywhere, police everywhere dust off their cold case files and they look for connections. And fairly often they find them and cold cases become closed cases. This is not one of those times. Shauna Beth Garber was found dead in McDonald County, Missouri, way back in 1990. She was 22 years old. She had been raped and choked and hogtied. But it wasn't until 2021 that police even knew her name. Last summer, Shauna's name and the murder were back in the headlines, though, when a sheriff in Oklahoma decided to dig up some property in Kansas that once belonged to Dennis Rader, the notorious serial killer known as BTK. That stands for Bind, Torture, Kill. And Shauna Garber certainly appeared to fit his M.O. The sheriff said he found, quote, items of interest, including tangled pantyhose and jewelry that was buried on Dennis Rader's property. And he came on this program to show us. This is the, the set of pantyhose that had the knots in them? Yes, you can still see the knots in them and, you know, where they would have been bound possibly around somebody's wrist. Tonight, we know that Shauna Garber was not a victim of BTK. She was murdered by a man named Tolfi Reeves. We also know that she was killed by a lethal injection, and this is strange, meth in 1990. How do we know all this? Because of more than 15 years of hard slugging by two Missouri detectives who never gave up and never gave in to the pressure to chalk Shauna's murder up to the monster who was already in prison. So what is next for Tolfi Reeves? Nothing. Tolfi Reeves was killed in a car accident three years ago. I'm joined now by detectives Lori Howard and Rhonda Wise of McDonald County, Missouri. They solved this case. Ladies, so good of you to be here. Thank you so much. Lori, let me begin with you. Are you 100% certain that it's actually Tulfi Reeves? And if so, how can you be so sure? Thank you, Ashley, for having us. And, and we want to say that our hearts go out to Riley's family. Thank you. Uh, we are 100% certain that it is Tulfi Reeves. Tulfi is not a new suspect. Um, he actually was a person of interest even as far back as 2010. What took so long to put the case together is that even though that we had statements and we had sources and we had witnesses, so to speak, nobody wanted to come forward back then because Taffy was alive. And that complicated the process. But we never got tunnel vision. Um, if you get tunnel vision as a, as a cold case detective, you might as well hang it up. Because what so often happens is if you get tunnel vision and you, you decide it's just one person, you try to kind of take that narrative and, and make the ending happen the way that you see it. But honestly, we, we went and interviewed Dennis Rader because it was the right thing to do, because we had to keep an open mind. We had to jump through those hoops and make it absolutely certain. So we did that. And uh, we came away from that after having looked at all of that evidence. And we came back and started all over again with the people in the file. You got a funny feeling, it. right, from Dennis Rader? Like, you showed him some pictures of his own crimes and then pictures of this crime, and what was his reaction? Like, how different was it? It was night and day. Mm. Dennis Rader, um, I like to say he taught us some things, because he did. Uh, I'll just be honest with you. We sat down across from him, and we showed him his own work, and he was animated, he was excited, he was reliving that moment, and it was very evident, very obvious, and then we put Shauna's work, uh, or Taffy's work, essentially, in front of Dennis Rader, and he was disgusted. Uh, we knew immediately it was not his work. He actually said it was overkill, it was sloppy. And, you know, we, we, we had decided pretty much at that moment that that was not his work, but we didn't want to dismiss that. We, we actually went back and looked at all of the writings and codes and everything that Dennis Rader had at the time, uh, that Sheriff Burton had at the time. And uh, we still came away knowing we needed to come back home and start over. So, Rhonda, first of all, I'm fascinated that witnesses were, you know, um, emboldened to finally come forward and, and tell. But I'm also fascinated by meth. I'm sorry, in 1990, I didn't even know what meth was. How did you figure out that it was a um, death by 
meth injection as opposed to strangulation because she was found with coaxial cable around her neck. Early on before we knew who Shauna was, um, when, back when she was Grace, there was, there was the supposition that she was strangled, yes. Um, the manner of death was undetermined whenever the medical examiner looked at the bones. Uh, or at the remains, and she did have the cord wrapped around her neck, but but there was no proof of blunt force trauma. There was no soft tissue damage. There was no nicks in the bones that would indicate a stabbing or anything like that. So the sub supposi supposition was at that point that, she, yes, she was strangled. Hmm. Um, however, we know that she was killed with an overdose based on the statements from developed sources and witnesses who were finally able to tell us what had happened after Talfi, Talfi's death and because they weren't afraid anymore. It's unbelievable. And it's, unbe the, uh, it's unbelievable, but then again, because I've met you on you know this program a couple times, I, I, I actually don't find it so unbelievable. You're both amazing and you're dogged in your work and I hope you'll come on the air. We'll talk about other cases. Uh, Rhonda Wise, Lori Howard, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for solving this. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Just remarkable. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.